Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to have uh, Sebastian go again into how he wrote his uh, flight uh, booking application on the mainframe on ZOS. As you recall in M137 here, this one had the third part which is how to make Rex API calls. And um, one more component of his uh, quickly developed flight booking application on ZOS was that he was using panels with Rex and uh, on TSO. And so in this installment, Sebastian is going to tell us more about how he got this done. There's some co code and some source that goes with, uh, with this installment. And I'm going to make all of this available uh, for download on my GitHub repository and link to it in the description below this video. Over to you, Sebastian. Thank you. Hey, welcome to the Moshix Mainframe channel. My name is Sebastian and this video will be about uh, panels and tables in ISPF. And this will also be the last video of our flight data app. Um, in the previous videos we showed how we can load a DB2 and how we can query a DB2 with a Rex and DSN Rex interface. And in this video we will show how we can uh, integrate this into ISPF panels and tables. Let's jump into the first ISPF panel of our flight data app. Um, this is a menu panel. Um, there are several ways how to create an ISPF panel and I will show you how this works in this video. Um, but what you see here is a menu and the menu handling in the background is done by Rex because we uh, said we use Rex. You can also, do, uh, you can also use uh, other programming languages. Um, so if we select one, this will be stored in a very level and the menu handler will um, then select the next panel that is coming. So this is the select flights panel that we called. And now we see here we have text fields and you can also connect them with attributes like um, this is this one is required. Um, this one I said it's, it's not required. So if we uh, type nothing in the first one it should work. Like Let's try enter required field. Okay, let's say uh, again Berlin. And if we press enter again, um, this will execute the um, SQS statement with the DSN Rex interface and will uh, load the table in the background and show us the next ISPF panel. And this is one that uh, has the table inside and there we can look up the data. So this is basically how it works. And now I will show you how, how I created those panels and how they can be called inside the Rex uh, code. Okay, to understand how those panels work, um, the, I said there are different ways how to create a panel. Um, for the first one, you should know where your standard panel library is, and on our system, it is uh, at uh, user.espplib. Um, so we jump into this uh, library. Let's say. Okay, and there we have some uh, panels in here. And these ones are from users, from other uh, students, and we can look at them. Um, now, these panels are coded by hand, it looks like it, or they are just copied and uploaded and a little bit customized. So, if you want to look up this panel, like um, Prag 548, uh, we can copy it out. And test it. So, for testing it, we go to a fresh, um, fresh ISPF menu, and do the dialog test. Panels and the panel name. So there's the panel. It works. So if there are some errors, it will show us the errors. But this one is correct, so it shows us the the, the ISPF panel. Okay. Um, if you change the panel, you might have to reload ISPF, so uh, it will um, have those changes inside. So how, how could, could you reload ISPF? You could go back to the ready prompt and um, type in ISPF again. This is one method how to develop ISPF panels, but f uh, I use the DTL markup language because it's way easier and you can compile uh, the panels and you have a 100% correct uh, working panel then. 
Okay, so the second way um, how to create an ICPF panel is by using the dialog tag language. Uh, you should definitely download their uh, manual um, if you want to try this out. Um, this has also many useful examples um, on how to create a panel and do, do those lists, something like that. And um, I will jump down to some of those examples. Um, okay, what we see here is um, the code, the DTL code. And it looks like a markup language, um, like uh, XML or HTML a little bit. And this is way easier to, to code uh, because this will be uh, converted into an ISPF panel uh, by using the conversion utility. So um, of course you, you uh, want to know uh, where, where's the conversion utility. And that was the first uh, thing I wanted to know. And I will show you this. Um, Let's uh, open a new ISPF menu again. Um, we press four, like foreground, and there we see it. This is basically the DTL conversion utility. It's the ISPD TLC uh, program, and you can call it with, uh, by typing 18, um, but you can also uh, go into utilities and DS list and type an ISP uh, star. And there you see the isp.sisp uh, exec uh, data set. We, we browse this and there's the program. I told you this is the um, DTL conversion utility. Now um, we call this uh, with execute. It's also just a, a Rex uh, program. And we are inside the, the DTL conversion utility, it says here. Um, so there you have to uh, put in your, your source data sets. In our case, um, it's moshix.tutorial.dtl. There's uh, where the DTL code members are inside. Um, and also, uh, I also included the uh, moshix.tutorial.data um, because there are also some uh, uh, code uh, stuff of it, some DTL code inside it. And the output data set is the moshix.tutorial.panels. So there is where the uh, converted uh, panels are stored. That's where the ISPF panels are. Okay, um, let's look into those um, DTL members. Okay, let's start. Uh, Moshex.tutorial DTL and look inside this one. That's the main menu. That's the first panel that is being called uh, when we execute our program. So let's view this. Um, and there we see, this is the DTL uh, code. And when you look carefully, you, you will already see those titles and you already uh, see the menu a little bit. And this will be converted into an ISPF panel. So when we remember, we go back and go back again, uh, type in panels and Browse this one, we see uh, with a few, we see this is the converted panel. And now you see also this is very, uh, it looks very strange, okay? But the, the good thing is that it will work. So if it converts, it will also work on ISPF, although it looks uh, very weird. You couldn't work on this manually. So um, let's jump back to our. Um, program this one and X and now we will push enter again and this will uh, lead us to our um, DTL data set and there we can select the uh, members that we want to convert into an ISPF panel let's select the main menu panel press enter and it says uh, select members to be converted we did that and press end to start conversion processing let's let's uh, type an end and we see some warnings, but luckily no errors. So there are zero errors. This is fine for me. And press enter again. We are at the beginning. And if we now press F3, this will be converted and stored into um, updated inside the tutorial.panels uh, uh, dataset. And that's how we create a, a panel with DTL. 
Okay, here we are in our main code of the flight data app. Um, it is written in regs, like I said, and now we want to uh, um, call the, the panels that we've created. So um, we created those panels there inside the panel uh, panels uh, data set and we will start into um, the program. Here we will show the ASCII art. This is nothing uh, panel related. It's just a simple say. It, it just prints out those uh, records that are inside a data set and that's um, the globe and the plane at the beginning of the uh, uh, program. So um, in the next step we initialize some variables and those variables are uh, important um, right when we start into the main menu panel. So we will see here um, just, just the uh, member name of the panel. Um, you can also uh, t uh, put in the, the full path of, the, of those uh, panels. But I set the path in the beginning and then I just have to say which panel I, I want to call. So we do this in a loop. Um, this loop will call the main men uh, menu panel that we uh, compiled with the conversion utility or converted into a panel language. And then um, it will also call the menu handler. So the menu handler is the Rex logic behind all this. Um, it is waiting for user input and um, we will jump down to the menu handler now. Let's go down. Um, the menu handler is uh, waiting for user input. If you just press enter, it does nothing. So um, it just does nothing when you when you press uh, enter because you, you haven't selected anything, you have written nothing in it. And um, how does it know it? Um, there's the menu uh, SLCT variable. This is also inside those panels. So the panel knows um, that's the variable um, for the command line. So if you put something in it, it will be written inside the variable and the menu handler can check it and will save it into the selection mode. If it's empty, it does nothing. If you um, type in some selection, like one, um, it will do something. So we jump down to the uh, uh, select logic. Um, there we have it, um, when we select one, then it will uh, select the flight selection panel and um, like I said the flight selection panel is the panel where the SQL is being set up and being executed and when we jump down to the uh, SQL statement okay here we are uh, at our select uh, SQL statement it is a select statement that is being joined over three different tables we have the route table, airline table and airport table that, uh, that you saw uh, in the uh, first video. Now, um, when you remember the uh, flight select uh, panel, you, you remember those text fields and um, they are being displayed by those variables. So this one was uh, in our uh, demo, it was Berlin. Um, so there will be set Berlin and um, this is the destination city and they can also type something in it or just say uh, whatever destination, okay? So this is our uh, SQL statement, it works great. And it also um, gives out the latitude and longitude. Those are the geo coordinates that we need to um, calculate the distances between the, those cities. So that's what it does. Um, okay, so then if we then press enter, it will start those uh, functions. It will call those functions the start table function and this will um, display the next uh, ispf panel and that is the one with with the uh, table so where you can see those uh, data um, okay now the question is um, how does the data get into uh, the table now um, we saw in the second video, it, it was the uh, Rex JSON uh, Rex interface, the, the DB2 connection, that we can get uh, data out of uh, DB2. And I will jump down now to um, the code uh, from the video two. And um, let's see. So um, here we are. This is the code um, that is uh, getting the data out of DB2 and it will save it into the output stem variable. The stem variable is a little bit like a, uh, an array and this will be exposed to our uh, program and we can use it in another function then. So the output uh, variable will be filled here and this is what I uh, explained to you in the second video, like I said, 
and now we have the output uh, inside the output variable and now we want to put it inside a, a ispf table and display it so let's go up and look for the code where where the output variable is, is being put in, into the uh, table. So I'm talking about an ISPF table. Um, this will be ended here to, uh, to not uh, run into errors. And then uh, we do those operations and fill it up and do it with an ISP exec TV add. So there are some specific um, commands to operate those tables. Now the TV add will add those records inside um, the flight table and this one will be displayed in the panel and the display panel is right here. Um, this is just displaying the table and there we are. Um, we are fine. Okay, so this is how it works. Um, there's a little bit more logic behind this. Those are over 300 lines of code. Um, so, but basically, uh, this is how you can write a Rex uh, application with ISPF panels that is very usable for other um, colleagues or something. You can automate your work. You can do some helpful little uh, scripts and uh, have them in a nice format on your um, on your uh, ZOS machine. So if you're interested in this, you should read the uh, DTL uh, tech language guide um, from IBM and also read a little bit into ISPF uh, tables and then uh, you should be fine. I will also uh, send the code to Moshik so um, you can uh, read up there. Thank you very much for watching and uh, see you soon. Okay, thank you very much, Sebastian Wint. Amazing developer, has won the Master of the Mainframe competition and is well known at IBM. Well, he's uh, uh, the new generation of developers on the mainframe. He's the future of the mainframe. Anyway, amazing person. Thank you very much, Sebastian. As I said at the beginning, all the uh, code is uh, linked to in the description below this video. Thank you again for this uh, series, uh, Sebastian and Henry, who was with him in one of the installments. And I hope to see you soon again here together with all the viewers. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, then now would be a very good time to do it, to see more of Sebastian, Henry, uh, Professor Onefron and me. And uh, see you soon again. Goodbye. Thank you.